I've got Niels with me here in my garage and we're going to be going over the five advantages and disadvantages to MIG welding. Number one, starting off the list with advantages is your wire cost. This is compared to flux core wire. Solid core MIG wire is cheaper, quite a bit cheaper than your flux core wire. That has the flux core, it has mm. to be, it's a two part process. This is yep. just manufactured as one thing, that's it? Is yep. that all there is to it? That's it. Okay. Now you may notice lots of people are like, well, hey, what's with the whole copper shiny looking stuff? There actually is a very small film of copper over that to protect it. Number two advantage would be the cleanup and the overall process. If you've done any flux core welding, which we have, you'll know flux core leaves a lot of uh, gas, spatter, dust, smoke. It all needs to be cleaned up, and sometimes it even takes a little elbow grease with a wire brush. MIG, this is where it takes the cake right there. The cleanup is almost none. You, you will have a little spatter here and there, but really there's not much you have to do to it after you weld. So you don't have to wire brush it off or anything like that with this, like you do with uh, flex core? Yeah. Oh, that's kind of awesome, okay. Number three advantage would be you can do thinner material with MIG welding. So this is where it's great for auto body, those panels where you got some thin sheet metal. Uh, combine that with the quick, uh, clean, easy cleanup, and that's where you just use MIG welding. So I've done some square, some thinner gauge square tubing, and yeah. I seem to like burn through it every yeah. time with the flux core. So you're saying MIG is going to be a little more easy to work with in that scenario? Definitely. Okay, good to know. Yep. And then when you go to restore your car too, yes, use MIG for those panels. It's on my list for next year or yeah. something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Number four advantage would be productivity. Now I pull up my good old Stinger because um, if you know anything about stick welding, you've got your rods, you're having to replace these because they're getting used up. Well, MIG welding, like flux core, so similar within these two, but MIG welding, you can put a big old roll in there in your machine and it will just keep outputting as long as you're pulling the trigger. As long as the machine can handle it, you can keep going forever. Right. You can bump it up to aluminum. Lighter than it should be, or lighter than it seems like it would be for this, yeah. this size of a spool, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so it's aluminum, okay, this is fascinating to me. I've kind of always wanted to do <laughs> aluminum. So MIG, I could, is it like way more difficult, way more complex? That's a loaded question. Okay. Yes and no, maybe another video. Okay. We won't dive too much into it. Um, it does take a little extra finesse, I will say. Uh, you do need an extra thing called a spool gun when, oh, you're MIG okay. or when you're MIG welding aluminum. But I had no idea that aluminum was even an option. So that's like pretty exciting for me. I like, I've huh? always wanted to try that. So I will, huh? I'll be giving it a go. Next video. Next video. I'll butcher <laughs> it, I'm sure, but gotta yeah. start somewhere. <laughs> Switching over to the disadvantages, as with everything, you got pros and cons. Yep. We talked about cheaper wire, but you do have an initial startup cost because you got to get a gas bottle. Uh -huh. Let's start with uh, the basics of if you're MIG welding, there's going to be two main gases. There's lots of others. Stick with these two and you'll be good. A C25 mix or 100% CO2. Okay. This is like the smallest bare bones things you can get. Wouldn't even suggest this size for a home type use, just because you'll you'll use up this size very quickly. Okay. But you're probably you know 100, 150 for this. Oh wow. Um, whether you can see the bigger bottles in the back, can't just easily lift those up. That's why. Hey, this is actually perfect to show you guys. But that's right. Yeah. Yeah, we got bigger. You know, this is 125 cubic feet. Not mentioned. Didn't think I mentioned that. Yeah. What size it's is this? It's measured one? in cubic feet. This is 20. Okay. It might be 10. I don't know. Okay. Small. Small, okay. <laughs> yeah, but in short, yeah, I mean, it ranges from 150 bucks on up. So that initial cost to go get a bottle is higher, but you don't have to keep paying for the bottle each time. You can do an exchange, just uh, like with your propane. Okay, this is propane take model. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Yep, so you take it into, and the great thing is you don't even have to take it into the same place you got it. Any place that sells welding gas, you can take your bottle in and they'll exchange it for that same size bottle. Okay. Same like propane in general, right? Yep, yeah. okay. yep, gotcha. same deal. Speaking of gas, I mentioned 100% CO2 and that's what this is. This is an aluminum bottle of 100% CO2. Uh, why I bring this up is because it's actually cheaper than your mixed gas. I love it because it works just the same, so why not pay less for gas? Yeah. 
Side note, if your wife wants the, the little extra fizz in her soda, just hook up, a, hook up a little hose right there and you can. They actually do sell little regulators and kits that you can, that you can totally I'm make your own uh, bottling. I'm having a lot of fun with that, doing some different things yeah. with CO2 and, and uh, playing with that a little bit. Second disadvantage, other than the initial cost, is you're adding gas. So portability, you, you've got many things, so you're not gonna haul all of this stuff out to the field or outside. It's kind of a shop on the cart. Yeah. I think you mentioned you picked yeah, up a cart this a cart. time. Yep. It's most likely gonna stay there. Your setup time itself, since you're having to run the gas, yep. um, hook up your flow, you know, your regulator, the flow meter, and get all that set up. Setup time, slight disadvantage for MIG. Yeah. Number four, the gas, yet again, man, this thing is kind of- uh, It's all about the gas. It's all man. about the gas. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not great for outdoors. So yeah, okay. if you can imagine any type of wind that comes by, it's just gonna blow the gas away and that will defeat the purpose mm. of the MIG weld. The gas is there to protect the weld. So. Um, not ideal for outdoors type situations. So it's pretty sensitive then to any any wind, any movement in the air blowing yeah. along? Okay, it's it not is. like this concentrated little little stream that's gonna hold its shape pretty well or anything? Okay. No. I don't know if we're on four or five. I don't know either. Another disadvantage was your metal, um, uh, I'll say, makes kind of a picky process. Okay. Your metal needs to be clean, doesn't like rust, doesn't like paint, so, you know, not like you're gonna be welding outside anyway. So yeah. typically indoors, your metal is already slightly clean, hopefully. Easier to have the stuff around to clean it up and make sure it's ready. Yeah. Okay. And the last disadvantage would be, even though we added aluminum, a disadvantage is it's not that great with some other materials. For example, castings. Now there's thousands of different casting compositions. So in general, just stay away from MIG welding any cast parts. And there it is, the five advantages and however many disadvantages we had. <laughs> we ended up with, yeah. Thanks, Niels, for coming by. Yeah. If you haven't set up your MIG process yet, that's what he's doing over on his channel right now. Yep. So go check his out. You can see how actually setting all of this up went for him. That's all we got. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.